All right, what is up all you beautiful makers, creators, and designers out there? My name is Aaron for Tatanka and Tatanka Enterprises, and this is Bullish Prints, and this is the Ender 3 S1 Pro. So this is going to be a very long-term kind of review of the machine um, and I'm gonna kind of preface this with this was my first uh, 3d printer this was my first machine I learned everything I know on this machine and for that and with Creality I'm very thankful uh, I pre-ordered this machine when the pre-orders first came up what was it almost Man, it was a while here. Oh, well over a year ago, I believe. Um, you can check out my other socials talking about this machine, and that'll kind of give you a frame of reference on time. Um, and this thing has been a a blessing and a curse uh, through the entirety of the ownership. Uh, this one's slightly modified. I'll have a little clip going on with it here of some of the things that I've done to this machine. Um, I did get a file for this cool accessory holder up here. One of the first things I did took ages because I was not really good at tuning machines, but this is a lovely thing to have. I'll see if I can find the file for this, or if you have this machine, I definitely recommend this. It's very nice to have. Um, we've got the light diffuser up here, which is also nice to have. I printed that in some, uh, transparent PETG. This is just in some black PLA. I've got um, silicone uh, spring replacements. Makes bed leveling a lot easier. And then I put these aluminum uh, adjuster wheels on there because they were blue. And I, feel, I felt like they would be stronger than the plastic that they came with. Um, I've got PC rollers on the print head and on the bed this is a bed slinger uh, after having the k1 and seeing the way the technology is going i definitely am no longer a fan of bed slingers but they do serve a purpose so there are some slight modifications i will see if i can put the files for things i have on here down below in the description um, there's also this mount that i got that just kind of goes on to the front that was for um, it's for, uh, so you can mount the camera to it. I did try to run some AI camera accessories, uh, but none of them really worked too great for me. And so <laughs> I also greased up the, uh, the guide screws on the back very well. So they are, they are tight. Everything is nice and tight and well lubricated. And like I said, this machine is giving me problems from the get go. So it could be because it was a early unit, which is very possible. Um, but even as I'm looking at it now, the, the belt uh, that's supposed to like join the two guide screws is horrifically loose um, and has no way of adjustment. Um, the belts for the bed and the extruder are okay. Those have been, they're, they're holding up okay. They're adjusted probably about as far as you'd want to go. But this machine has, uh, has not had a, this, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. My particular example has not had the greatest life. Um, I've had to replace the entire um, extruder, the drive assembly, it's all, it's all one thing. It's a Sprite extruder. That was replaced under warranty, and now even the new one is having the same issues as before where it just stops extruding. Um, I pulled this thing apart and rebuilt it so many times. Same with the first one. They've been completely torn down, like down to each individual component, cleaned, contacts cleaned up, reconnected where I could, lubricated, the board cleaned up and hot glued where I can and it just it just stops extruding and it's it's so intermittent and random i don't really know what the problem is this is obviously well outside of warranty at this point 
And I don't feel like pumping more money into this machine after getting the K1. Um, let's see, this front piece broke. It just broke while taking it apart because I've had to disassemble this thing so many times, it's not even funny. I've gotten multiple new beds, like actual heat beds. Um, the platform that the, because of this reason, that the flex sheet sticks to, those have all torn apart, like chunked up. Um, so I've got new ones of those. I had to get, a new, I got a new power supply, I got a new light, just because there was just issues nonstop with this machine. And uh, they never really stopped. Um, it was a constant fight, so when I was offered the Ender 3 Pro as a partial payment for a commission, that was very appreciated. So thank you for that. And you know who you are. So I got some use out of that. Um, this machine does have, for all the problems it has had, does have quite a few hours on it. Um, I was using it nonstop for quite a while, but I did learn a lot about this machine. I did learn a lot about 3D printing maintenance and processes. So that I'm appreciative for. Um, I appreciate that this thing came to me as a box of rocks and was nothing but problems because now I know a lot more about breaking into these things and trying to fix numerous problems. Um, so this uh, machine, if it works, the current plan is to relegate this. This is actually another extruder. I brought up the wrong box. This is the one that came on the unit. Initial problems, pulled apart, rebuilt multiple times, stopped extruding. So this machine is now going to be, once I swap everything over, a dedicated uh, laser. It's going to be set up with and next the resin uh, machines with that exhaust system. I'm going to have another line come off to it to come down to this to catch and pull the fumes out for the laser, but that's only if it works. I have the entire conversion to put this to laser as well as the software and the firmware. So if it works for that, then that's what this will be. If it doesn't work, then I'm just offloading this whole thing. Uh, so if it doesn't work, Someone local to me will find this for sale um, as a parts or a rebuildable machine because everything but the extruder works. So if you want to get an S1 Pro at a reduced price that has been modified and upgraded with a whole bunch of extra parts, you might see it local on Marketplace. Now the culmination of this video. I've had this machine for over a year. It's done a lot of work for me, a lot of commissions. Um, a lot of products on the Etsy shop, which you can see down below. A lot of products for friends, family, products for just stuff around the house. It has done a lot. Do I feel like I asked too much of it? No, because I've definitely been working the K1 hard too. And that thing has been a treat for the most part. The uh, mid-length review for that will be coming in the coming months. Do I recommend the Ender 3 S1 Pro? There's been newer Ender 3s that have come out since. There's been 5s that have come out since. I don't think there's been another S1. I will check and confirm as I edit and upload this. <sighs> Overall, it's going to be a no. Depending on price. I'll have to see what the retail is for this right now because I know the retail for a lot of core XY printers has come way down and those just blow bed slingers out of the water in my opinion when it comes to speed, quality, and reliability. Now, on the reliability front, most of that is based off of other creators and other makers out there that I've seen that have been using these machines nonstop and they seem to last a while and last well. But if, let's say this is down to 2250 right now, MSRP. If it's not your first machine, I say go for it. If you want something that is upgradable, which the Ender 3 is obviously known for, and these types of machines are very known for, not as much as a Voron, but still the Ender 3 is known as the, you know, the tinkerer's machine. If you can get it for cheap 
and it's not your first one and you just want to have fun with it, I mean, sure, of course, go for it if, if that's what you're into. But if you're looking for your first 3D printer and you want to get into this whole ecosystem, this whole community, this, this whole industry, I do not recommend this printer at all. Now, Core XYs are coming down. The technology that is within these machines is growing constantly. If you're wanting to get into the 3D printing space and you only have 150 bucks, my guidance to you, if you're not a tinkerer, if you're not a modifier, if you're not into tearing down electronics, very sometimes complex electronics and figuring out how they work so you can make them better or fix them or whatever, save your money. Save your money for something like the Bamboo Lab, whether it be <laughs> the P1S, the P1P. I, would, I mean, between the P1P and the P1S, I'm leaning more towards the P1S. X1, if you can afford it. D don't jump in too early because your budget's low and you just want to get in on it because this was over $500 when I bought it. And it was nothing but issues. I got probably close to $500 worth of parts from Creality under warranty because of all the issues with this thing. And then all the time and effort that was put into this, tearing it down multiple times, just to try to get it to work. It's truly, truly, truly not worth it. Get you an enclosed, preferably for me, so you can do more exotic materials. Hell, ABS isn't even exotic and it still works better in it with an enclosure. And spend, I think the K1 is right around 500 bucks, right around what I paid for this. Get that. Um, look at the, um, I mean, you can start getting into the Prusa, but they're just more expensive in general. But you get what you pay for with the Prusa. So, if you're not into tinkering and just tearing everything down, try to figure out how it works, you just want to plug it in and, and have it work day one with very limited issues, or if there are issues that are super easy for your general person to figure out, spend more money. Save your money, get a better machine. And that's pretty much it. That's where I'm at. This thing has been such a pain in my ass that it is going to be relegated <laughs> to not what it was designed to do, but it's capable of doing and be a laser cutter and engraver. I've got everything I need for that. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And then this will be sold for parts or what have you, and everything will go with it. So if you know what you're doing when it comes to 3D printers, and you can pick this up on the cheap, check it out, because it was a pretty big leap when it comes to Ender 3s and with Creality. The touchpad is nice. It's relatively easy to update. You still gotta pull it apart to put the thing inside, but so it's not the greatest. Um, Wi-Fi enabled machines are very clearly superior in that fashion. But if you get one already upgraded, hell, if you're getting this, you should, in my opinion, already know how to update your machine. So that shouldn't be an issue. It was cool. It did a good job. It's got the dual um, Z rails. The bed is very firm and quick. And it was relatively fast at the time. And I will throw the specs up over here. So if you are at all curious about one, this will be directly from Creality site as well as with the price for it. But like I said, I had a lot of issues. There are known issues with this cable. Um, I don't know exactly what, it's something to do with this connector here. They just, they just go bad and it's not worth, in my opinion, the effort, unless this cable is like five or 10 bucks. If that's my problem, um, I might end up replacing it to make sure the laser module works. Other than that, if you're looking to get into 3D printing, do not start here. Find you a Core XY that is reliable and good. Bamboo Lab, Creality K1, anything in that area. Spend at least $500 on a Core XY printer with Wi-Fi capability. 
and a good slicer. Creality Slice is actually very nice. So thanks for watching and uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about not only the Ender 3 S1 Pro, but Core XY printers versus bed slingers and maybe Creality as a whole because I know there is some very spicy content in that world as well. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Aaron for Tatanka and Tatanka Enterprises, and this has been the Long-Term Ender 3 S1 Pro review on Bullish Prints.